Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready for God's word today? Praise God. But we'll not go on until we ask or make demand for our daily bread. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hey, did you receive your miracle yesterday? Praise God. Today is another day. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday's miracle was for yesterday. Today is a new day. Fresh grace, fresh miracle, fresh provision. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you ready? Join me in faith right now and say, Father, I demand for my daily bread right now. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Listen to me. You remember God fed the children of Israel with manna, and that manna was fresh every day. You know, recently I've been talking about the way God thinks. See, we're talking about the outpouring of God's Spirit. And God says, I'm sending the rain. So the rain is coming. And when the rain comes, what do you do? Prepare to receive the rain. And I'm not talking about a long time from now. Now, the rain has started falling. God has started. The rain is here. Open your heart. God's way of reasoning is not the way we reason. Isaiah tells us that as the heavens are far above the earth. That's exactly how God's thoughts are far above our thoughts. He, 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 and until we, we begin to practice how to reason or understand God. Many times what God's children try to do, they try to drag God into this realm. And we want to force God to walk according to this realm. We, we don't know that we are the ones that are supposed to grow up to function in his thoughts. Not him coming down to understand. So sometimes someone is praying and say, Father, you don't understand. Huh? <laughs> you are speaking to the one who says, I am understanding. Now you're telling him you don't understand. Have you, have you ever prayed like that before you ever thought? You don't understand how this thing is paining me. Ah? Until God opens up his book and shows you. You remember David. David said, look, I, I almost fainted. I almost lost it when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And that's the true story for almost everyone, every child of God who wants to walk in righteousness. You will get to that place where you're like, is this worth it? Have you been there before? I, you're looking at life and you're wondering, what, what good was my righteousness? Maybe you're a retiree and all your days of service, you were honest, you were sincere. You, you did things right and you insisted on things being done right. Well, here you are, you are retired. And the same government, you are insisting that things should be done right. Or whatever gov uh, organization, maybe government or private. And here they are, unwilling to pay you your pension or whatever gratuity you have with them. So you sit down and you ask yourself, all the opportunities I had to steal, maybe because you look around and you see those people who stole, they are living well, they are living large. They are even the ones giving you. And you're asking yourself, what good was my righteousness? That is a temptation every child of God faces. But David said something. He said, then... I entered into the sanctuary of God and I understood their end. See, God is righteous and he has set the principles of this earth. You see, those principles God said can never be faulted. That's why the Bible said we should follow them who through patience inherits, inherited the promise. True patience. You expect to see result now. So you see, if a man is doing evil, you want to see his result now. 
let it be obvious that God has judged him. If a man is doing good just once, you want to see the result. Now that's you. When you do good just once, you want to see the result. Hey, brothers and sisters, there is a consistency that you follow. And that consistency shows your character. And it's that character that will produce the relationship you need to work with God and the angels. Consistency. So the Lord is saying, I'm pouring out rain on the earth. And we know that rain is his spirit. And so Isaiah told us, until the spirit be poured out from on high. Until the spirit be poured out from on high. And the kayaka. You know, something comes to mind. I was telling you earlier about the way God reasons. So something comes to mind. I was sharing this with, uh, we, we had a prayer meeting on the first. So I was sharing it with the brethren. You remember the story of Elisha, Samaria, and the famine in Samaria. The Syrian army had encamped around Samaria. And that made the city of Samaria to shut their gates. Because then you had walled cities. So they shut their gates. Nobody comes in, nobody goes. Because if you open that gate, the army, the Syrian army will come in and destroy your whole city. So they lock the gates. Everybody stay inside the city. And the Syrians didn't lose, they didn't go home. They said, okay, we know what to do. We will keep camp here until they, their food gets finished because they have to go out to do their trade they have to go out to go to their farms but but now they are not going and we will stay here until their food finishes then we'll see what they will do and they stayed and things got so bad in samaria that women you know the story began to eat their children and when the news got to the king, the king said, what nonsense is this when we have a prophet in this land? Now, now the Lord had told me concerning this. And when I say things like this, you better believe me because it's true. The Lord has said to me, he said, because I asked the Lord, I'm like, why was Elisha, because it was stated that Elisha was waiting on the Lord. Why did the famine have to get that bad before a solution came? And the Lord spoke to me. He didn't waste time in this one. See, there are things I'll ask the Lord. He will tell me months after I ask him. Sometimes years. The longest I've waited for something for the Lord to tell me is two years. For good two years. But the truth is, by the time he spoke to me after two years, I realized he has been speaking to me from the day I asked him. But it actually took me two years to come to the place of understanding the answer. But then, from this side, you look at it, at that day the Lord just came to say, you asked me about this, let me talk to you about it. But hey, before this time, he had been building the foundations of everything I need to understand what he is going to say. Now, that's the thing, sometimes, you, you, think it's, you think God is not answering, you think God is quiet. No, your answer at this moment, you may not have the capacity to receive that answer. So the first thing God will begin to do is to build that capacity in you. And it will take time according to how yielded you are and how fast you are in understanding. So concerning this matter, it's not a matter that had to do with life and death. It's not a matter that had to do with my day-to-day -day living. It's a teaching. Concerning the teaching I, I heard from someone. And then I'm like, Lord, is this true? So it took me two years. And when the Lord spoke to me, everything just made sense. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So now let's go back to this story. Elisha was there. So, okay, I was telling you what the Lord said to me. The Lord said to me that I had already told Elisha what to do, but he was battling with it. 
I said, really? So what did you tell him to do? I said, what he eventually did. When I thought about it, I said, but Lord, ha, that's, that's some hard nuts. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, whoa. So now, now you know the story. The king had to send a message. He said, where is the prophet in this land? I'll cut off his head. Let God, let God do so to me if I don't cut off the head of that prophet. So one was sent to Elijah. And here is and now you see this in 2 Kings chapter 6 and 7. Here is Elijah sitting down with some elders. And suddenly it was revealed to him that someone is coming to cut your head. Whoa. Okay, and then he mentioned it to the people. After he mentioned it to them, there was a knock on the door. Ah, he said, see, he's here. When he opens the door, grab him. And then when he realized that this guy actually came, no angel stopped him on the way. Because see, as ministers, we are entitled to divine protection. Believe me. Every true servant of God knows. Because that is one area that God is going to prove himself in your life. Now, if after you see that, you don't know how to handle it, that's between you and your God. So every minister, everyone called of God, now every child of God have angels that are guiding them, okay? But then when God have called you apart from others, and giving you an assignment, there is another level of protection that he gives you. So with, as one who have understanding, there are certain things you must understand about your life. That's another day stop though. So Elijah was sitting and he has seen in the realm of the spirit that a decision had been taken concerning him. And so he just felt, eh, before they get here, uh, they'll be stopped. Or the king will change his mind or something. Because it's not my fault now. Am I the one that caused the family? And suddenly when he heard the knock on the door, he knew. He said, no, this thing is of the Lord. Meaning, now this, this is exactly what happened. The Lord have commanded Elijah, Elisha what to prophesy. That's all he needed to do. Say it. But then he was battling with it and battling with it and battling with it. And suddenly, the Lord said, if you don't say this thing, your head is going to go. Ha! But, but, then he had the knock on the door. He said, ah! When he said, this thing is of the Lord, it actually means this challenge, God have allowed it to come because I'm walking in disobedience. And so what did he do? He declared the word. And what did he say? He said, by this time tomorrow, a grain of wheat is going to be sold for, I think he says, a shekel or something like that. Now the Bible have told us how far things, how high things went during the famine. So for him to now come and say, by this time tomorrow, Things are going to be so cheap. And the guy looked at it and said, even if God opens a window, a window in heaven, can this thing be? In other words, he was saying, if God decides to open window in heaven and pour out food, is it possible that so so amount of food will be bought at, for one shekel? Is it possible? So even if God does this part, human beings will not allow the price to fall that bad. That's what he was talking about. So he said, even if God opened, so his problem was not that God cannot open the, a window in heaven. So, but the problem is, even if God opened it when there's so much surplus, it can't get that cheap. Men will not allow it. And then I said to them, it's like today, a prophet coming to prophesy that 
by this time tomorrow one naira one nigerian naira is going to be equal to one thousand dollars by this time tomorrow. now you know what the situation is right now and naturally everyone that want to reason will say nah please have bad i'll talk another thing but elisha said it but guess what the miracle was here here's the miracle you know the story the four leopards went to the camp of the syrian and saw it was empty because god had caused the syrian the syrians to hear the foot uh, the footsteps of the leopard sounded like an army a great army so somehow someone just brought this report that the syrian um, king have called for reinforcement how did he call for the reinforcement when nobody could leave the city there was no gsm phone there but that's what god does god causes you see that that's what god does when people want to trouble you he will cause them to hear a rumor and they all fled leaving their camps now here is another testimony to this the army of syria had enough food in their camp that could crash the price of grain in a whole city that's not normal An army that went to war had in their camp enough food to crash, not just to hand out to people, to crash drastically the price of grains, of food for a whole city. And the price came down just like Elisha said. But the miracle is while Elisha was sitting, waiting for God to do something, the king was sitting. All of them didn't know that just beside them, just by their gates, there is enough food that will supply the whole city. So much so that the price of food will crash. They didn't know. Elisha didn't know. But when the Spirit was poured out, hallelujah, when God released the rain, and, and, and let me tell you this, you, you, you may find it, uh, you may battle with believing or understanding it, but I'm going to tell you still. I don't think it was all about the food that the Syrian army had kept. I believe when they brought those grains and they started distributing it, there must have been an anointing that multiplied it. I believe so. The Bible didn't write it that way, but I believe so. Because when you, when you study scriptures, you bring it into application. And because the word of the Lord went, there must be the element of a miracle in it. Yeah, but the element of miracle is that the Syrian army heard the sound footsteps of troops coming. Yes, but the supply aspect. Remember, the prophecy was not that the Syrian army will flee. The prophecy was direct. A grain of wheat. They didn't say how it's going to happen. It didn't say, it didn't say who's going to cause it to happen. It didn't say there are four lepers. No, the man of God just gave the word that at the gate of Samaria, this is going to happen. And to the next day, according to his word, it happened. Now, when God speaks, there must be the supernatural element that follows his word. I'm sharing this with you so that you will believe God today. What God tells you, he is not planning on how to do it. Before he gives the word to you, he has finished it. So what do you do? Believe him. Don't doubt. He's pouring the rain. What do you need that rain for? It's coming to you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Oh, I release great blessing upon your life today. 
I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, you're coming out from every darkness that I've held you bound. Today, you are coming out of it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.